वेलकम विल स्टार्ट विद द सेकंड चैप्टर ऑन साइंस क्लास सिक्स दैट टॉक्स अबाउट द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ फूड नाउ डेफिनेटली सिंस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फूड इट वुड बी वन ऑफ द माउथ वाटरिंग क्लासेस दैट यू वुड कम अक्रॉस नाउ व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ फूड वी फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट द कॉम्पोनेंट्स दैट आर डिराइव्ड आइदर फ्रॉम प्लांट्स और फॉर फ्रॉम एनिमल्स सो वी हैव अ लिस्ट ऑफ फूड प्रोडक्ट्स विच आर डिराइव फ्रॉम प्लांट्स एंड विच आर डिराइव फ्रॉम एनिमल्स सो लेट्स से मीट फिश ऑल मिल्क प्रोडक्ट्स सो यू हैव चीज पनीर बटर सो ऑल दोज वुड बी फूड प्रोडक्ट्स दैट आर डिराइव फ्रॉम एनिमल्स एंड इन द फर्स्ट डायग्राम वी हैव ऑल द पल्सेज नट्स सो ऑल दोज वुड बी एग्जाम्पल ऑफ फूड प्रोडक्ट्स दैट आर डिराइव फ्रॉम प्लांट्स so first of all we understand that the food products can be classified into two heads one that is derived from the plants and the other that is derived from the animals now when we talk about the composition what does food product actually includes so food includes various components we cannot say i can eat potatoes for the whole day if i eat potatoes for the whole day the only source of energy that i would be getting is carbohydrates similarly if i am eating only green vegetables i would be getting minerals and vitamins but to have a kind of healthy body and a balanced diet we need to have a balance of all the essential things that we require so our body requires for a good functioning carbohydrates and fats carbohydrates and fats together are known as energy giving food so both carbohydrates and fats provide energy now good examples of fat would be ghee oil so all those would go under fats when we talk about carbohydrates we will talk we will talk or we will understand about the food that provides starch so for example rice you have potatoes so all those would be rich in carbohydrate coming on to the next category you have proteins proteins are those which are considered as body building or those are the building blocks of the body so they help in the growth of the body as a result some of the common uh, things that include protein are pulses so from the vegetarian diet or from the plant sources we can say those are pulses soya bean is indeed a very rich source of protein from the animal sources you have meat fish so all those would be sources of protein then you again have egg coming on to the next category the next category is vitamins or minerals vitamins or minerals are basically considered as the protective food so they help us build immune system and once you have a strong immune system you have the resistance to fight the various diseases so vitamins and minerals are obtained from various plants so all the fruits all the green leafy vegetables are rich sources of vitamins and minerals and finally you have fiber that is essential for the diet so fiber basically comes as roughage and most of it is removed as undigested part however this is important for the normal functioning of the body and therefore fiber which is also classified in higher standards as you go you would come across the word roughage and that is very important source or important constituent of your daily diet now we have talked about what all incorporates or includes our diet now we would come across the various tests to understand whether a component has decent amount of carbohydrate decent amount of fats or not so understanding that is again very important we have different tests that we would apply to help understand these but a kind of general idea about this again we would repeat the basic elements carbohydrates and fats provide us energy definitely fats provide more energy as compared to carbohydrates proteins are the building blocks or they provide uh, or help in the growth of the body vitamins and minerals are protective foods 
they protect us from the various diseases again under vitamins you have different vitamins you have a d e k all these are fat soluble vitamins then you have vitamin b and c which are water soluble so we classify vitamins as water soluble and fat soluble vitamin b and c are water soluble and dissolve in water very quickly so all the green leafy, leafy vegetables you have lemon juice orange juice all those citrus fruits which are rich in vitamin c would dissolve in water or are soluble in water however vitamin a d e k are fat soluble so that's again very very important fibers come from the various pulses green leafy vegetables uh, grains all these add to the bulk or the volume of the food that we intake and now start let's start with the various test so the first test we would do is for understanding the uh, amount of fat so we have two blotting papers here this is a plain blotting paper as you can see and does not have any stain now what i did was i put down few drops of oil on this piece of paper so if you can see this sheet turns out to be translucent and there can be difference in the two colors that could be seen and that's primarily due to the presence of the oil so when you put a drop of oil on a blotting paper you can try it at home by yourself when you put a drop of oil on a blotting paper it would leave a scar or a kind of blot and the paper would turn to be translucent to uh, so to make this simple here we explain the three terms opaque trans transparent and translucent so this sheet of paper is opaque i cannot see through it you cannot see my face when this sheet is in between however let me bring this jar in between and you can see the uh, reflection here out and therefore you this this is a kind of transparent since there are two layers it's not exactly that transparent the next is translucent when you look through a translucent thing it appears to be a kind of blurred image so what you can see is the hand you can see here is a kind of blurred image of a hand rather than a clean image of a hand which you can see through a transparent object like uh, i have a glass here and from here you can see the hand as uh, very clear and that is what is transparent so we understood opaque transparent and translucent within this lecture and we talked about the test of fat now coming on to the test of starch i have a potato here i'll just take a section out of it and i have this section what i will do is i will pour a drop of iodine so i have iodine here and i'll pour a drop of iodine on this now when i pour a drop of iodine on the crushed potato it initially the iodine was red and orange in color but what happened here was a kind of dark violet uh, scar is seen and that shows this potato has significant amount of starch so when you take a test of starch you put iodine on potato or rice or whatever experiment you want to do and then you can see a kind of blue black color that is see and therefore we can say, say that this potato has starch coming on to the next test that is protein now for the test of protein i have two things here one is the dal solution that's uh, normal chana dal and then you have a milk we will put the drops of so uh, copper sulfate and so caustic soda or sodium hydroxide that's naoh so you have naoh and CuSO4 copper sulfate that we would be mixing in this so what i'll do is i'll simply mix this solution that i have here in both of this and let's turn out to see what the results are there so this and the milk just a second so we have this solution with the milk as well and now what i'll do is i'll stir it so when i stir it you have a color change that is seen and then you can see this milk turns out to be kind of bluish purple color that is seen and then you have this dal solution that i would try to stir here and you would have a color change that is seen so you would have a blue purple color that is seen now the component of the color that is seen in this 
is different from this and that shows both of them have components of protein but the amount of protein in these two vary. The one that comes out with a dark purple color would have a higher component of protein as compared to one that comes out with a light purple color. So that's what is the test of protein. So what we have done for now is the test of starch which we did with using the potato and putting out iodine on it. Then we had the test of starch which we, which we uh, saw with the oil and the blotting paper. And finally the test for protein where we put out a solution of copper sulfate and NaOH that's caustic soda into the two protein samples that we have taken. Now again I have a piece of walnut here. What I do is I take a small section of this and I simply press it with my finger. Now, this is something that you can do at your home and check out. Keep pressing it for a while and once you remove it, if you look onto the finger carefully, you would have kind of oil drops that are seen and that shows the presence of oil or fat in the walnut. So that is what is the experiment to understand the various components in the food. Now, definitely when we are using the various components, there is a requirement for the balanced diet. If we do not meet out with that balanced diet, a body suffers from various deficiencies. And these deficiencies lead to different kind of diseases. So deficiency of each and every component in the body leads to different kind of diseases. So if there is deficiency of vitamin A, you would have poor vision. If there is deficiency of vitamin B, now, vitamin B, as you move into the higher standards, it's further classified as B1, B2, B12, and so on and so forth. So, each and every vitamin would have a kind of different deficiency disorder. Beriberi is a common disease. Then, basically what happens is the muscles get weaker when you have deficiency of vitamin B. Vitamin C, deficiency leads to scurvy. Now, this disease was common in the sailors. What used to happen is the sailors or the navigators used to travel a lot. And in the ocean, they could not find food that are rich in vitamin C and they used to suffer from uh, the deficiency of vitamin C, which was predominantly the bleeding gums. Now, what the sailors later on used to do was they used to carry along with them a small amount of lemons and oranges so that they can meet out the deficiency of vitamin C. The next is vitamin D. Vitamin D can be obtained through natural exposure from the sunlight and a deficiency of vitamin D leads to a disease which is known as rickets. Then again from the minerals you have iron, iodine, calcium, those are predominant. Calcium helps in the formation of strong bones. Deficiency of calcium would lead to uh, breaking of the bones or decay of the bones. Then you have iodine. Deficiency of iodine leads to a disease known as goiter. Similarly, iron deficiency leads to anemia or lack of hemoglobin in the blood. Now, blood com comprises of three cells, RBC, WC, WBC and platelets. Red blood corpses, then you have white blood and finally you have platelets. So, red blood cells have hemoglobin and deficiency of the hemoglobin leads to the disease which is anemia. So that's the kind of basic outline that we understand. Now we come on to a very important aspect of food. All of us consume food for our survival. But have you ever thought about cleaning and handling of the food? The food that we eat is not available in nature as it is. It undergoes series of handling processes and finally we have a food item that we can enjoy and eat. Now, we would understand what are those series of steps that go through. Before that, there is a common myth which says costlier foods are much more nutritious. That's a kind of proper myth and that actually does not happen. Each and every food is important for a balanced diet as we said. Again, washing of the food, cleaning of the food, those are some of the basic things that are required. So what we do is, we if supposedly if you want to consume an apple, you would wash an apple and then eat an apple. So that's the way to remove the outer germs that exist on the food. Again, when we talk about apple, you have the outer layer. 
most of the nutrients are present just underneath that outer layer so whenever you are peeling a kind of fruit it's very important you have a very thin layer that is being pe peeled out as a result maximum nutrients are preserved now here we have a table this would be available on the website so you would have the various vitamins and the diseases and what does the deficiency lead to most of that we have already discussed now we would come on to one of the most important aspects is cleaning of the food there are four ways i would say five primary ways in which we can clean the food the first is threshing now what happens is if you go on to the countryside area villages you would see you have stalks of grains that are there so these stalks are being thrashed on the ground and finally you have the grains that are separated from the long stalks and that is what is the process of threshing the next come is the, 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 the sorry the next that comes is winnowing under winnowing what happens is you try to separate out based on the weight so i have some peanuts here that you can see now these peanuts some of them does not have a cover and others have a cover so what i do is i simply crush those out and what you can see is if i uh, put a blow of air the lighter covers would flow away so what people used to do or people still do in villages you can see you have a kind of uh, dish where you keep all the grains and you just blow air so you can see most of the lighter things flew away and you have the solid part that remains so this separation which is done by the process of winnowing separates things based on the density so the lighter the things th those flow away and the heavier remains in the or heavier comes down and the lighter flows away so that's what is winnowing the next is sieving now sieving is done through uh, what we say a kind of net what happens is i have two things here i have a tray that i put here and i just put this here i put some peanuts here and then i put some mustard seeds which are very small so these small mustard seeds when i put here they came down in the plate and that's what we try to explain so what happens is we separate things based on the size so size and the number what happens under sieving is we separate out two things based on the size and the number then is hand picking hand picking is very simple i have a kind of set of things here so i have mustard seeds i can separate those i have peanuts i have almonds and i have walnuts so i can separate all of these by hand picking so hand picking can be done based on size based on color based on the shape so there can be various ways under which you can do hand picking so these are the primary four things that we understand the next set that we would be talking about talks about four important aspects that separation then you have sedimentation filtration and finally decantation now let's talk about separation i have a flask here just see this carefully so you have three layers out here the top most is the mustard oil below the mustard oil we have water and in the lower most layer we have sand now what we have done is we have done a separation between oil and water so these two liquids occur in different levels and you can see those very clearly as separated out and therefore we we tell that this is the process of separation what happens under sedimentation is the stones or the bigger size particles settle down and that is what is sedimentation now same thing when we want to explain decantation what i do is i take another thing and i drop the upper layer here so what would happen is the water would be separated from the oil or i put this water and oil mixer uh, mixture in a uh, beaker uh, flask or a kind of funnel and just pour it so what would happen is the lighter things and the heavier things would separate out 
and when you are doing that in two different containers so you have oil in one container you have water in another container so what would happen is that process would be known as decantation and finally is filtration so filtration is uh, just removing the two liquids so basically if you are preparing tea you are removing the tea leaves and the tea that you can see in the uh, cup below so that's the process of filtration filtration can be also done with filter paper however all of this what we have discussed now the separation of substance is a separate chapter chapter 5 that we would be continuing again and we would be discussing the same things in further detail in that lecture so here we are just bringing this uh, into the concept to help understand the idea of cleaning of the food so here our basic focus is how do we clean the foods so sedimentation as we said you mix sediment with water and this sediment settles out and you have the water on the upper area similarly you have the decantation process that occurs so as we said food can be cleaned by various processes first is winnowing where you have the impurity that's separated based on the weight as we did in the case of peanut we uh, removed out the cover of the peanut then you have hand picking we can pick by hand threshing where the stalks are separated from the grains sieving where you have the impurities that are separated based on the size and the number so what we did through using this net was a example of sieving and finally sedimentation decantation filtration and separation so all this we have tried to introduce only with respect to cleaning of the food here we would be covering all this in detail when we would be talking about the separation of substances in the further chapters so stay tuned for more updates and more lectures in science uh, we would definitely be working around class 6 and we would move on to higher lectures uh, as we complete class 6 do subscribe to the channel if you have any uh, suggestions or any comments leave those in the comment box below we'll be happy to resolve it have a very good day ahead